All right, everyone, this is Nick back with another episode of the ReVenture Consulting YouTube cast. Today, we're going to take a deep data dive into probably the most common question I get from real estate investors around the country. And that question is, how do I identify if my market is experiencing a housing glut or a housing shortage? Uh, now, a housing glut, what is that? So that's when there's too many new homes and apartments being built for how many people are living in a city or moving into a city. When that happens, uh, the housing supply is higher than the housing demand and rent values and real estate returns start to go down. And that's bad for real estate investors. Now on the other side of the ledger, when you have a housing shortage, not enough new homes and apartments are being built to satisfy the demand of all the new people moving to a city. And when you have a housing shortage, you tend to see increasing rents, increasing values, and increasing returns for real estate investors. In this video, I'm going to break down ReVenture Consulting's methodology and data used to identify whether a market is in a housing glut or a housing shortage. So in this video, we're going to use Phoenix, Arizona as an example. Uh, so we're going to use data to figure out whether Phoenix is currently experiencing a housing glut or housing shortage and what that means for real estate investors in Phoenix. The hope is that you'll be able to watch this video and then be able to take the same data and methodology uh, and apply it to your own market so you can figure out whether you're in a housing glut or housing shortage. Uh, without further ado, let's get going. All right, so the first place we need to start in terms of housing supply is figuring out how many new homes and new apartments are getting built. There's a couple different ways to do that, but uh, my favorite is to look at permit data. Um, and that's basically data on how many new permits are being pulled each year. So this graph is showing permits pulled by year uh, across the Phoenix metro area. And the Phoenix Metro includes not only the city of Phoenix, but also surrounding suburbs like Mesa, Glendale, et cetera. So back in 2005, 63,000 permits were pulled for new housing supply. Um, and those permits likely would have been turned into completed buildings sometime in 2006 or 2007. We can see that 63,000 back in 2005 is by far the highest of any year even up through 2020. So back in the mid 2000s, Phoenix was permitting a lot of new home supply. But with the recession of 2007 to 2009 and the great financial crash, Phoenix's new home permitting plummeted to about 8,000 per year in 2010 and kind of stayed subdued for another couple of years before really starting to pick up again in the mid uh, 2010s. In 2020, Phoenix is on pace to permit about 45,000 new housing units uh, this year. So we, we learned some interesting things from that graph. Uh, it looks like Phoenix was probably suffering from a housing glut in the mid 2000s when it was permitting 63,000 new homes per year. Uh, but then permitting dropped to, to less than 10,000 for several years in the early 2010s. Maybe Phoenix was suffering from a housing shortage then. Uh, but the central question is, what's happening today? So now we're up to 45,000 permits per year in 2020. Is that too much or is that too little for the Phoenix metro area? To answer that question, we need more data. Uh, because permits on their own don't tell the whole story. You need context. So for instance, Phoenix's population is now over 1 million higher in 2020 than it was in 2005. So 45,000 new units today in 2020 doesn't mean the same thing as 45,000 new units 15 years ago. We need to find a way to contextualize the permit data and make it comparable across time. And that's what permit percentage does, uh, which is shown on this graph. So permit percentage is simply taking the permits pulled in a given year and dividing it by the existing housing supply in that year. So for example, back in 2005, 63,000 units were pulled in Phoenix and Phoenix had 1.6 million existing housing units. So those permits were a 3.9% expansion of existing housing supply. 
That then cratered to about 0.5% in 2010. You can see 8,300 permits pulled on 1.8 million housing units. And that's now 2.2% 2 .2 in 2020, 45,000 permits on about 2 million housing units. So now all of a sudden we have numbers that are more comparable across time. And we can see that even though Phoenix's permit percentage has increased in recent years, um, you know, from about 1.2% in 2015 to 2.2% today, it is still well below the highs reached in the mid 2000s, where it was at 3.9%, 2.7%. So that's a good thing. Um, you know, clearly Phoenix is building more new homes to satisfy uh, the demand of people moving into the city, but they're not building the same type of housing glut that they were in the mid 2000s. Now, we could add even more context and perspective to this because often many real estate investors um, are faced with the question, not necessarily of should I invest, but where should I invest? So how does Phoenix's permit percentage compare, let's say, to other cities around the country that are experiencing a lot of growth? Looking at that comparable data could provide more key insights into whether Phoenix is currently in a housing glut or housing shortage. All right, so we're back on the permit percentage graph, but this time we've added three other cities um, that are experiencing uh, strong growth. That would be Austin, Texas, up here. Nashville, Tennessee over here, and Denver, Colorado over here. Now all of a sudden we have more flavor and perspective. You could see pretty much all of these cities followed a similar track in the mid-2000s. They had elevated permit numbers and they all kind of went down by 2010. And back in 2010, Phoenix, Denver, and Nashville were all pretty close in terms of permitting and Austin was a little higher. But since then, um, Austin and Nashville have really separated themselves from the pack. So you can see Austin immediately jumped up in 2012, had another big jump in 2017, 2018, and another jump in 2020. So Austin in 2020 is uh, on pace to permit a 4.3% supply expansion uh, with new permits. Remember that Phoenix was 2.2. So in terms of relative home building and supply expansion, Phoenix is only actually half what Austin is permitting. So that's a good thing. Uh, you would, based on that data, you would say Austin's probably closer to a housing glut than Phoenix would be. Uh, Nashville is a similar story. Nashville's permitting 3.1% permit supply expansion in 2020 compared to 2.2% in Phoenix. So Nashville's permitting a lot more. Um, Denver is actually the one that bucks a trend a little bit where Denver is only permitting 1.5% this year, and that's a decline from a, the 1.9% Denver was permitting three or four years ago. So Denver of the four uh, looks to be uh, the furthest away from a housing glut um, because it's really actually seen a decrease in new unit permitting the last five years where all the other cities have seen an increase. However, Phoenix's increases have been much more manageable than Austin's and Nashville's. So I think that data makes us feel better about Phoenix's um, permitting situation. So while permits in Phoenix have increased a lot in recent years, they have not increased nearly as much as cities like Nashville and Austin. However, there's a final piece of the puzzle that we really need to evaluate here, and that's demand, right? So we, we can talk as much as we want about how many new units are being permitted and built, but what really will dictate whether the market's in a glut or a shortage is how many people are moving into that city uh, and forming new households in that city to absorb that new supply. So theoretically, if you permitted very few new units, say less than 1%, you could say your city's suffering from a housing shortage. But if no one is moving to that city or the population is declining in that city, 1% might be too much. You know, on the other side of the spectrum, you have a place like Austin that's permitting 4%. Um, Austin's experiencing some of the most growth of any city in the country. So maybe that 4% is justified given how many people are moving there. So we need to really ask the question, are enough people moving into Phoenix to justify 
the recent expansion in permitting. So the best way to answer this question is to look at household formation. So when uh, someone moves into a city and establishes a residence, that would be uh, an example of household formation. Also, you know, for instance, if a 18 year old moves out of their parents' house into an apartment, their own apartment, that would also be an example of a new household being formed. So if a lot of new households are being formed, then that could soak up the supply of permitting. What this graph does is compare the two. So the blue line is the annual increase in household formation in Phoenix. The red line is how many permits are being pulled that year. So if we go to the left side of this graph, we can clearly see that Phoenix was in a housing glut in the mid to late 2000s because this red line permits, let's just say 44,000 back in 06, was well above the 10,000 households that were formed that year. Same thing in 07. 37,000 permits pulled, 22,000 households formed. 19,000 permits pulled, 11,000 households formed. So when you're pulling more permits and households are being formed, you're setting yourself up for a housing glut because you're delivering all these new homes and apartments and there isn't anyone to live there. But we can see that since 2009, the exact opposite has occurred. Household formation, the blue line, has consistently been above permitting the red line. So in 2010, Phoenix formed 31,000 new households only permitted 8,300 new units. In 2011, they formed 27,000 new households, only permitted 9,000 new units. And while household formation has gone up and down a little bit um, year by year, the trend is consistently above the amount of permits being pulled over the last decade. So that is an indication that Phoenix has been in a real housing shortage. Um, you can see the blue line here is just for instance, in 2018, 54,000 households formed, only 31,000 permits pulled. So all those new households are occupying the existing units and basically shrinking the amount of units available. And Phoenix isn't permitting enough new supply to account for that. So now we feel pretty safe in saying that Phoenix is in a housing shortage. And just to you know, reference some aggregate numbers, over the last 10 years, Phoenix has added about 40,000 more households than they have pulled new permits for places to live. So Phoenix is at basically plus 40,000 in household demand relative to how many permits they've pulled. That's actually the third highest of any metro area in the country. So another way to think of that is Phoenix has the third worst housing shortage right now of any area in the country. And just to show you the, the power of this housing glut versus shortage dynamic, we're gonna take a look at Phoenix's home value now, going back over time and how it's changed. So this graph looks at the annual change in home value in Phoenix year by year. And what's immediately evident is back in the mid to late 2000s, just in that period as we were describing that Phoenix was in a housing glut where they were permitting way more units and households were being formed you see massive declines in value. So in 2007, we had a 6.5% decline in home value. Then in 2008, we had a 19% decline in home value. Then in 2009, we had a 22% decline in home value. And these declines kept occurring until 2011. So in 2011, Phoenix's average home value was 135,000. In 2007, it was 268,000. So literally values went down by 50% over the course of about five years. And that shows you how much damage a housing glut can do to real estate owners and investors in a given market. It can basically wipe you out. Um, and if you don't get wiped out, you are likely investing significant amounts of your own cash just to pay off debt and to keep yourself afloat, which is not a great situation to be in. However, since around 2010, 2011, when Phoenix started entering a housing shortage, that is household formation exceeded permitting, we see large increases in home value, 11%, 22%, 8%, and basically in that five to 8% range since 2014. So now Phoenix's average home value is back up to 297,000. 
And the fundamentals of the market look a lot better now with only a 2.2% permit expansion in 2020 than back in 2005 when it was a 3.9% expansion. So that's an example of how you can use data to answer the fundamental question of, is there a housing glut or a housing shortage in my market? Phoenix over the last decade to half decade definitely falls in the housing shortage um, bucket. Um, it has seen increases in permitting as of late, and that will need to be monitored going forward. Uh, but so far, it's not at a level that would cause immediate concern to real estate owners in the market. You can get this data from uh, the U.S. Census website. They do a monthly survey of every metro area uh, in terms of how many new permits are being pulled. They also have data on household formation. So you can use this data to uh, understand your own market or any other market that you're interested in in particular. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe if you like the content. Uh, always leave a like and a comment and let me know if there's any topics or markets you want me to explore in future videos. Until then, this is Nick from ReVenture Consulting signing off.